I'm Abby Shank, and I'm the owner and CEO of Tiny Estates, a tiny home community in Elizabethtown, PA. Tiny Estates is a 14-acre property that is an all-owner community with 58 existing lots and pending approvals for another 42 to have 100 total. So Tiny Estates is zoned as a campground. We purchased it in 2017, opened in 2018 with 15 nightly rentals. So we functioned a lot like a hotel. We took what was functioning more like a mobile home park and worked with the township to say, how do we clean it up? How do we make it better? So that it was a win-win for the town. So they were open to the idea of tiny homes being that they knew the property was gonna get cleaned up and was gonna be sort of a draw for people to the area, which was awesome. So we started with 15 homes as rentals and from there grew, it ended up becoming a showcase for builders to put their tiny homes. They could place them and have people come try them out. And even if they didn't love the layout, they could see quality and they could see different models and designs from different people. When COVID hit, we realized that we had a huge waiting list of people who wanted to live in a tiny home or have a tiny home permanently placed somewhere. And we felt like rentals were getting a little bit tricky. There were people coming that had been so cooped up during COVID that things were getting destroyed. We decided to pivot. We sold the homes that we had and switch to an owner community. So it functions more like a mobile home park in that someone owns the unit and they rent the lot from us. Typically they do a six month lot rental agreement and most people come and go. We have one woman, it's sort of an office space. She's from DC. We have a couple, Bonnie and Ty, who live um, in the British Virgin Islands. And so this is sort of their home base when they come to visit the kids. Everybody kind of has a different lifestyle and a reason for having their tiny home, but it's created this nice, well-rounded sense of community and allowed people and us as a team to see a different experience, not the nightly rental, but more of a long-term tiny home experience, which has been great. My name is Ellen Newton, and I, I started coming to Tiny Estates for the first week of every month when they first opened, testing, it, testing out all the different units that were available as rentals back then. I think I stayed in nine different houses. For me, I needed to know whether or not I could live this lifestyle. I wanted to, I was interested in it, but I have had a lifelong love of possessions <laughs> and uh, the, the concept of that being all I owned was a little bit daunting. And my house was finished and arrived here on Mother's Day of uh, 2019. So I've been here ever since. The property formerly functioned as an RV park and over time has progressed quite a ways. There's been tons of landscaping and property maintenance, infrastructure improvements, plenty to do. But we enjoy the community and we'd love to show you around. So we're currently at our community building. You'll notice the outdoor space where people have fires and come and gather. We have community days where everyone gets together, meets anyone who's new and just hangs out. And then inside there's an oven for those who don't have one in their home. They do game nights, knitting circles. There's a piano for people who like to play instruments. They'll do music evenings. So anything that people would like within the community if they don't have space in their tiny home, they're welcome to book this space and use it for their needs. So lot rent is between $650 and $750 a month, and that includes pretty much everything. Water, sewer, electric, propane, internet, trash, mowing, plowing, and then technically property taxes because we pay for the land and the homes aren't taxed since they're considered RVs. So as long as the trailer has a VIN number, it's permitted. We don't require any special you know, NOAA certification or anything like that because when we started that wasn't as standardized, um, which is great. Our township has really worked with us on that. The internet streams throughout the whole 14-acre property, um, and there's a general Wi-Fi, but then they can also do an in-home booster if they want their own network, because we found some people are like printing to each other's printers or seeing each other's smart TVs, so some people want their own network name for privacy, and that's possible too. <laughs> so I'm Emily. I'm Dylan. I'm Dylan. And we live at The Vision, and yeah, that's our new tiny home. <laughs> uh, we've been here... About a month and a half. Yeah. I didn't actually consider it at all for the most part. You know, she was like, hey, I've seen this place, can we go check it out? So I thought it was gonna be this really compact walk hunched around all the time. And then when we actually came to look at it, the place was incredible. It was much bigger than I thought it was and just completely, completely turned my opinion on it immediately. 
I saw it was listed on Facebook Marketplace and all the amenities that it came with was perfect. So we live right across here from the water. We have our own parking space, all utilities included, even Wi-Fi. I think it, at the price point, it was un unbelievable, but perfect for us. This is Wally, my pal. I am his support human. <laughs> this is uh, the tiny house that I am renting. I'm in tiny house training. This is the green bean. I had been a stay-at-home mom for over 20 years. The chaos that I refer to as a divorce and being uh, a stay-at-home mom for 20 years, not having employment, I couldn't even necessarily put my resume out there. I wouldn't get a call back on uh, my age. I don't exist as a person, so if I go to try and rent a, an apartment in an apartment building, I won't even take my application because I was a stay-at-home mom, unemployed, and because what I'm relying on now is temporary support. I can't qualify for a mortgage because you have to be employed for two years for that. So trying to find another place to live, knowing I had to get out of that one, be able to afford it, and not want to live somewhere foul, and have somebody be able to accept me as a renter. So this worked out. This was like essentially like a word of mouth kind of thing and really just couldn't have been better. I'm so grateful. <laughs> That's awesome. I think it'll look, well, first of all, it'll look way better, but it'll be a really cool feature to the garden. Yeah. What all got planted here? Um, there's tomatoes there. Okay. That little pepper plant, the shortest one, is a habanero. Oh, nice. Yeah, and the two bigger ones are poblano. Behind me you'll see our community garden. We have some awesome owners who are painting a mural to beautify the space. And then the garden beds where they all share different things that they've planted. And we also have a blue tiny house shell where we have mailbox spaces, we leave packages and sort the mail, as well as laundry stackable units for people to do laundry. The community garden has been a labor of love, so every season somebody sort of takes it on as their project and they divvy out who gets what beds and a lot of people share, so one person will do potatoes and another will do tomatoes and they don't need everything they grow, so they share it amongst themselves, which is really cool. But we've always said that that container is so ugly, what do we do with it? So we have all the maintenance equipment and tools and things inside, but they're going to paint a really pretty mural of, I think the saying is going to be watch it grow and then paint all the different like fruits and vegetables and suns and mushrooms and things that are planning to be in the garden as well. It's not the cookie cutter neighborhood where everybody is the same background. I think that creates a very well-rounded sense of community and people tend to better understand each other because they don't automatically assume like I'm in your same situation and I know what you're going through and I'm doing it better. They have different viewpoints and that kind of balances things out. But then you also have the people who want open sprawling meadows and no mowing and then other people who want perfectly maintained and, and pristine. So trying to balance that everyone's going to like the layout, like what their neighbor's house looks like, make sure that, you know, we have a project proposal form that people fill out. So if they want to do a deck or an awning or anything that's outside their house, it's something we can kind of review and make sure fits within the community guidelines. So you don't start to accumulate a bunch of things. I'm Heidi and this is Tim, my husband. We have been living in this tiny house for a year now and we built it in 2020. We live here with our two kids and a dog, Jaden and Lucy. They are the kids. And little Ruby is a dog. Living at Tiny Estates has been really fun and I think laid back. The neighborhood, uh, yeah, that we were living in before was more suburban. It was like single family homes and we really didn't know a lot of our neighbors. Like we knew like maybe two, but yeah. here, like, like I know all of like in this vicinity I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that there's more of a, a connect here than our, our old neighborhood. We are starting a mural for the community garden. Abby just approved it and she got all the materials on um, this past weekend and she dropped it off and it's just going to be like a dedication for the garden. So, and then the community can come and paint too if they want. Just more ideas like that will help everyone getting everybody out of their tiny houses and connecting.
there, there's that balance of, you know, what we want to let people do versus what we're going to do as the property owners and what we're going to manage. But it's nice for people to, even if they're small little projects, like the tree planting last year, you'll see all of the tubes around tiny estates. Now we planted about 200 trees with Chesapeake Bay Alliance. And that was one of our tenants that, that planned that um, and kind of coordinated everybody. So it's, sometimes it's just like a small day project, but for people to feel like when they drive around, like they had a hand in that and that the community is evolving because of what they did is really cool. So you'll notice behind me is our temporary off-leash dog park for those who have pets on the property. We're actually in the process of permitting a new park that will have a small dog park and a large dog area, as well as EV charging stations for those with electric cars. And one of the things I like about Tiny Living is that it forces you not to store things you don't need because I just emptied out a house I had lived in in 25 years. It wasn't a huge house, it really wasn't. But it was like a clown car getting everything out of it. And it's like, oh my God, I've been storing this stuff for how many years and it never got used. Because you always think how much of this you need, how much of what. So I'd like to pare down more. In terms of going forward, I'm thinking about how I want to design my house, how I want to customize it for my kind of living, for my needs, and aesthetics too you know because i didn't really talk about that other than wanting to feel spacious and not have it, everything look cluttered you know want it to be pretty being on the journey and coming out of the dark place this is such a positive thing even just moving here the people people i've met you know my neighbors here other people i walk around people stick their heads out and go hey i haven't met you yet and or stop by and have coffee and you know it's such a different vibe i had a regular suburban house on th on a half acre i do live closer to people than before but i like the dormitory style thing where any of us could just open the door and somebody's nearby or close the door and you're by yourself and you have that option. Until recently I've been a walker and you're getting to know people even though I didn't have a dog because most of the people that walk have dogs. <laughs> it seems like dogs are fine in tiny houses but I don't have one. I don't even have a hamster. <laughs> You can always go out in the evening. We have a fire pit. We have the best times there because it gets dark. You can't see each other quite as well and you get friendlier and, and you get to know somebody in a different way instead of watching them come home from work or watching them walk the dog. Or, you know, that's more intimate, I guess, than, than you would get. Now, I'm also of the age where I have to consider what if something happens to me? You know, I want somebody somewhere around to know that it's time to look for me. You know? <laughs> We're doing a lot of bartering. I can't drive right now, so I have a neighbor who doesn't have a car right now, but she can drive a stick, so she's been driving me to the doctor and to the, to the grocery store and stuff because she needs somebody to drive her to the grocery store, and so, you know, it works out. I think Tiny Estates has been an incredible community. Everybody has been so welcoming and open and so willing to help you out. When we were moving in, we were just, hey, everything good? Like, you guys need anything? It's It's been amazing. Where I lived before this, it was lucky if I talked to my neighbor once <laughs> every six months. I was stunned to see, you know, everybody waving. Tiny Estates, I didn't realize it was like an actual community, you know? I guess I've never actually lived in a community community like this where everybody waves and everybody's nice. Most of the neighbors are super, super friendly. They're very thankful because of what was here before and because of how run down it was. They like that it's evolved so much. And this is a community that's been farmland for so long that there's been a lot of pushback to like a local Wawa going in or a tractor supply. And so they've shut down a lot of development. So I think the fact that this was an evolution of a property that they feel like worked within its use and it, it conforms, but it's improved and added to the town and, you know, brought revenue when we did nightly rentals and has brought workforce even to the area has been nice that, you know, they appreciate that, that they see that. This is an atomic tiny home. 
It was placed here as a rental and has since sold to a property in Sladington, Pennsylvania that we've partnered with to do 15 rentals for people to try out tiny home living and stay in a hotel type environment. And then down the street, we're setting up an owner community that will have 75 owner lots for people to place their tiny homes. So we're working with land developers, individuals, sort of people all over the country who have interest in tiny homes and want to do communities. For some people, they just know tiny homes are an awesome affordable housing option and they want to buy a house or two and invest in that and then maybe rent it long term or Airbnb it. And so they're just looking for a place to put it. So partnering them with a campground owner or someone who has land that they could put it and helping that be sort of a win-win experience has been step one, but looking on a more large scale for properties now to be able to build out communities. The goal is somewhere around 25 acres to do about 100 sites. Ultimately, we would love to have a small pod that are rentals so that people can try it out, that they can experience the community, they can really see if it's the vibe that they're going for, and then lots for owners to, to place their houses. So the key for us too is making sure it can be a residence. The hope for us, I think, is more of an affordable housing community and a better option for people who want something permanent. Not that you couldn't be transient, but I think most tiny homeowners are buying them and looking to place them and, and really live in them. So we're looking in California, Texas, Florida. We have several on the East Coast here that we're, we're starting that are in the works and final approval, so fingers crossed. Hopefully in the coming year, we'll have about five that we're saying are opening as tiny estates, but the goal would be somewhere around 30 to 40 over the next five years, which I think there's definitely a need for. It's just a matter of how quickly we can find the land and get the approvals and, and develop the properties if the infrastructure isn't there. At this point, we're holding off on posting anything until we truly know that it's accepted by the community and it's finalizing, but we do have a section on our website that shows coming soon communities. So there will be one in Tennessee that's hopefully coming soon. As soon as we know dates, it'll go on there, but it does say Tennessee because we know it's happening and it's approved. And then as other properties come, they'll all be on that page so people can see where the next one is. There's also a section on there for those who have land or are interested in investing. So if somebody says whether they own it or not, hey, I live in Bend, Oregon, and there's this perfect property near me that I think would be great for a community we would love them to send it our way because we're always looking for great properties that we know the community would embrace or if they have land that they'd like to develop and they don't know what infrastructure is needed or where to get houses or things like that we're trying to partner all the needs together to see if we can find a win-win situation that's a middle ground for everyone so the section on our website that says you know bring one to me it's almost like a pre-waiting list that we're not saying like, hey, we're going to this town, but if we know a whole bunch of people have interest or have tiny homes that wanna go there, we're a lot more eager to look in that area and then we know all those people would have interest. So that's that's been helpful in just isolating who wants to be where. <laughs> not that it makes the process move any quicker, but. <laughs> I personally couldn't live in a tiny home because I have two young kids, but that doesn't mean it's not for someone who's a young professional starting out. And a tiny home community, in my opinion, is a far prettier, better development to come in than a huge townhouse complex, which is the new affordable housing. We recently saw a statistic that only 12% of housing offered is like a one bedroom or a studio, but about 50% of the population demands that because they're single or they're a couple that would only sleep in one bedroom. And so there's a huge need for that. And if you look at what types of communities could come in to fill that, I think a tiny house community is the perfect thing to really bring something different to a community that is unique, that gives a different housing type while still meeting that need um, without having this huge high rise complex to fulfill that need. our video and for stopping by tiny house expedition i'm alexis and i'm christian don't forget to like comment and subscribe and for more tiny home tours and stories click the videos below and join us on instagram for bonus content including face-to-face -face conversations with us <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there all right thanks guys have a good one